I remember when uh, Christian, when I told Christian I one time when, that uh, I was Christian, walking around in like. That's that's crazy. Sorry about that echo, everybody, for a second there. We should be good now. That is insane. Hello, everybody. Oh, there we are. We're up. We're live. You don't have a way to play the music for us, don't you? No, just, uh, just gonna have to no, take fun. my it's cue. Fun. Just yeah, it's just the, the kind yeah, of I know, yeah, the I know your it messes up your thing a little. It's okay now. It's just it's, that has just I was just like oh poor me I I had to like drag one extra file to the yeah, to yeah the it's destiny. real rough. Mm -hmm. It's fucking ah oh, I hate it. Why do you do this to me? <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys, we're gonna actually get started here pretty soon, everybody. Yeah, we're, we're already here. The Whatever you want. Hi, Jeff. What's just give me a countdown. Oh, Chef is here? Oh. LCD anxiety. Did I just say D anxiety? I thought I tweeted LCD anxiety. What did I do? <laughs> what did you do? Anxiety. Oh, yeah. I tried to wolf when you. Yeah, if you wanted to run back, I whoop your ass again. Nah, I wrote it good. Unless I copy. Nah, I did good. You did good. Don't worry. Whatever happened is somebody else's fault. He's having a Colorado night. He read that as ICD oh, anxiety. I did good. Like... Thank you, Jeff. Oops, that's right. If I don't have this thing up, AG disappears. So I gotta make sure this is on my uh, window. Do you wanna, if you wanna use the Discord, don't you wanna open it up on a browser? Just in case? No, I'm just gonna. I think okay. I got everything on my other monitor. I think we're good. I got the song. Okay. I am. Yeah, that's uh, the thing. Well, you wanna, are you? you wanna wanna put over there? Those might run down. So, one second. That's what I need over there. No, so. I mean, like, if you wanna look at Discord. Yeah. When oh. are you gonna rook? Yeah. No, it's okay. I'm going to just keep Discord okay. open all the time on this one. Yeah. <clears throat> all right, everybody. I, I think we're going to get started now. All right. Ready? Let's do it. <clears throat> Ready, Christian? Yes. Ready. Actually, AJ, do a sound test. Make sure you sound good. AJ, talk. All right. Do I do I sound good? Do I do I sound good when you I talk lovely. into this microphone? You sound AJ, lovely. Is AJ's level good, everybody? Is he a little loud, a little soft? Is he? Audio is good. Okay. Fine. Yeah. yeah Let's do good. it then. All right, we're ready. Okay. Hey, you guys hear me? Start cheering now! Yeah, yeah let's get this over with. <laughs> woof woof hi i'm mike minotti and i am a nintendog hi i'm aj minotti and i'm also a nintendog and we are the last of the nintendogs <laughs> today are you afraid of lcds nuts <laughs> i couldn't help myself jeff's right <laughs> damn it <laughs> and uh uh we're gonna talk about some game boy advance hidden uh gems AJ, thank you for joining me, filling in for Jeff Grubb. Really uh, appreciate it. How are you doing? Yeah, more like Jeff Scrub, am I right? Yeah, God, he's in chat. Look out. He was just saying he looked like Jim Trestle. He was just complimenting yeah, you. Take care of my kids. Yeah. Oh, wow. Whoa, dang, dude. My kids are asleep. Wow. If they come downstairs, too bad. What, they come downstairs and bother you all the time. You tell me about it constantly. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, that's incredible, man. There's a lot of video games coming out. Are you uh, are you playing any of the the big new releases? Because it doesn't. I don't think you're playing like like a dragon or Tekken. You're not a Persona you know what boy. I'll play. You know, what, yeah, I played today, Mike. What Skyrim? Oh, for God's sakes, that's a problem. Why the? What's wrong has, with you? It has 1,300 mods installed now. That's terrible. That's the worst. <laughs> that is actually disgusting. You're gonna you're gonna check out Persona though. It's just on Game Pass, right? Oh, yeah, yeah. It's not it's not out yet for yeah. me. No, no one doesn't actually come out. Uh, it's February, technically. February third or something. Uh, that's so bad. Whatever that, that is. Friday, uh, yeah. Whatever Friday. What's Friday? It's still it's, that one. It's still insane to me that that is just like already coming out when Sega just released this other giant RPG, one that I would like to play, but I guess I'm just not right now because right. Well, I had that moment too, where because the last one came out on Game Pass, last two, yeah, because the games came on Game Pass. So I was like, oh, I'm gonna try, I'm gonna try this new one. It sounds like you don't need to play them to fully get into it, and then. Nah, this one's seventy bucks. It's like, uh, yeah. I don't know. Yeah, but yeah. Persona's gonna be on Game Pass. I'm just gonna play that. 
Pops, and Sony's got their state of play tomorrow. Um, our, our friend Special Nick has kind of said a lot of what's going to be there, so I have a good idea of what to expect, but he said he doesn't have everything, so there could still be some surprises. Uh, okay, everyone, if, you, if you're worried about spoilers for such things, I will warn you now, but AJ, are you, you've heard about the Sonic Generations thing, right? No, I actually haven't oh. looked, but I don't care. Tell me. Oh, yeah. So, uh, there's going to be Sonic Generations remaster, like they did with Sonic Colors. Uh, and it uh, will be I mean, getting cool. I mean, tomorrow, I'd... according to Special Nick, who I trust. I mean, I have that game. Like, I've played it modded on the PC, so I don't know what else they'll do. And it, it isn't one of the games that's got the 4K60 treatment on uh, Xbox One. But still, I like Sonic Generations a lot, so that would well, be uh, very cool. And Nick, Nick, is, uh, Nick is saying that there will be some shadow content added here uh, okay yeah as long as there's like new stuff to it yeah that's very exciting i like I liked, uh generations that was definitely uh, a, a fun one because you know i'm a nostalgic asshole i like things that are old yeah. it's the best modern 3d sonic game uh maybe uh, i i, 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 I mean, prefer the feel of like sonic adventure 1 2 sonic levels over the boost levels it, overall in general the boost thing just never was great for me i actually kind of like the way the open world stuff plays in frontiers uh, yeah, I was gonna say. I, well, I, when I said that, I was kind of like neglecting Frontiers because that's almost a different thing. It's very different. It's very different. I like, like Frontiers a lot too, actually. Yeah, but hey, we're gonna. That's gonna be happening tomorrow, so we'll see what Sony has. And at, then at that point, it's just Nintendo we're waiting on to get their direct finally, uh, which is probably happening at some point in February, almost certainly. Uh, I know Jeff does not think that they will talk about Switch Two at that direct. How about you? Well, it, it's kind of becoming an elephant in the room at this point, right? Because what what big AAA game are you going to announce at this point at the end of this console's life cycle when you have the next thing waiting supposedly well, in the wings? I'll tell you what Jeff thinks it'll be. He thinks that Metroid Prime 4 is still a Switch 1 game, and maybe that's like... Boy, I, I mean, I again, Nintendo got a Nintendo, so I don't put anything past them. But boy, wouldn't that make sense to hold for a launch title or even do the cross-gen... Zelda style thing with it for Switch Two. I agree, AJ. You sure are smart. We'll see. Um, th- th- yeah, like I both see the point of maybe it's still somehow a little early to talk about Switch Two. I don't. I don't know though. It feels like I mean rumors are ramping up so much. We're going to be talking about those today. Obviously, that at some point you think Nintendo wants to say something, even if it's just some kind of actual acknowledgement, nothing more than a logo. Don't even show us the actual machine yet. But you know, if, if even if you just show us. Even if once you admit that there's a Switch 2, then you can do things like announce the next Mario game, right? And yeah, get that. but are they are they afraid that announcing the Switch 2 will cool the sales of the current Switch? I, mean, I guess. I mean, yeah, but that's going to happen. I mean, I, I think people, everybody understands that anyways. At a certain point, Nintendo mm-hmm. saying a Switch 2 is coming. I guess maybe it's going to do a little bit there. But otherwise, what are you going to do? You're going to show us more of Princess Peach, which we already had a trailer of. We thousand year doors coming. That's great, but I mean it's a remaster game. We know there are still mm-hmm. some things that they could do, and I'm hoping they do do. I do do. Um, <laughs> you know, I want that. I want Metroid Prime Two remaster actually pretty badly. I really want to play through that. There's that Fire Emblem uh, remake, and look, that could still be a Switch One game, right? Uh, it's, yeah, so that's fine. That's fine. There are still things that could be mm-hmm. released, and yeah, if they really want to, and I'm also afraid to say it, they still have Wind Waker and. Well, hey, princess, you can always pull those rabbits out of the hat. Waiting in the wings as well. Yep. <laughs> I mean, what? Uh, I, I I can't believe I think the HD version of Wind Waker is over 10 years old now or something like that. Like, That's that what you get. Yeah, like, that was in your 2013 uh, list last right. week. Well, that blew my mind. So, okay. <laughs> but, um, yeah, I think I just saw Nick in chat say he's expecting that next week. So, hey, uh, Probably pretty soon here we'll be having some more Nintendo news. And then everybody can be depressed that they didn't get what they want out of that and realize that another direct won't be coming for quite some time. And you yeah. know, it'll it'll be interesting. But there are there are some uh stories getting out there, AG, about what we maybe should expect from the Switch 2, including what to expect from the screen. Um, according to a Bloomberg story by a Takahashi Machizuki and a Yuki Furukawa at Bloomberg, um you, the Nintendo's next console is going to launch with an 8-inch LCD screen. This is according to an Omdi- Omdia analyst, Hiroshi Ayase. Ben, really, really putting really putting me through the ringer with the they, Japanese names. all these Japanese names, yeah. yeah. Uh, so, th- this has some people who, a, a bit upset, AJ. LCD is worse than the OLED. Um, I think we all are pretty happy with OLEDs. We had the Switch OLED. The Steam Deck has an OLED model now. Is uh, n- Is no OLED... 
a deal breaker or just a heartbreaker? I came up with that. I think it's, it's a heartbreaker. That, I like that, though. That's good. Yeah, I mean, obviously, smart. I'm going to get the switch. I'm going to get the switch, too. I'm annoyed because not only will it be a worse screen than we have, unless it's like some crazy different LCD tech that I doubt. Um, but it also means that in three or four years later, they'll be selling me the switch to OLED. And I'll, of course, buy that, too, because I'm a consumer whore. So, uh it's just, it's just I, I don't I I understand it's probably a cost saving measure for them. Um, the same story but, does. But, but, I, actually, I forget yeah. the story does, but you know everybody's everybody thinks it's four hundred dollars, and I think that's right. Makes yeah, sense. That's, and that's fine. I mean, you know, if a Steam Deck can be four hundred bucks, a Switch Two can be four hundred. Well, bucks. it will be fine if in a few years the Switch Two OLED is four fifty, and like that, it's not like that's going to come in at four hundred necessarily. Right, right. Also true. I mean, that's the thing with Valve did with the with this uh, the Steam Deck OLED is they didn't raise any prices on the models, and then they dropped the prices of the old ones, which is something Nintendo would never do. Yeah, it, it is like upsetting because you know I think nobody likes the idea of getting the next switch in in any respect it being a downgrade and that is a downgrade mm-hmm. on the screen quality now it will be an eight inch screen so that will be slightly bigger yeah, than what bigger. we have i mean i don't know how much i need a bigger screen to be honest but whatever that's fine the hardware will be better and that'll be the, the most important thing here you know it, it'll be this thing where when i'm really playing it i doubt it's gonna bother me that much but it is kind of this bummer and it is that kind of thing where I'm almost stewing on this a little bit, so that's why I wish I would get some actual info from Nintendo, and I could be mm-hmm. excited about a new Mario game, or about, like, getting to play Tears of the Kingdom on 60 FPS, 60 FPS, or whatever it's gonna be, instead of right. just... Well, and and th- that's what Nintendo has to consider, too, is the longer it takes them to announce it, the more rumors like this are gonna start running off with a life of their own. And again, maybe they don't care. Remember all the weird Switch rumors we had with that weird teardrop-shaped all screen thing that clearly was fake and but people I thought that was it. an actual patent but um it, it kind of was remember it's like but some someone like uh photoshopped it and then people were trying to like remember they were like analyzing the reflections in the window to figure out oh, where this that location thing. was I thought you meant the yeah. patent drawing okay right. well yeah it was both but um so here's a question too so the 8 inch screen uh which is bigger when you look at a switch oled it's not like there's a ton of bezel space to just kind of keep that same size so does this mean a bigger form factor with potentially bigger, different Joy Cons. If it's going to be like a truly a Switch Two in the way we think, that's a big question mark for me. With the whole thing, is what are we doing with Joy Cons? Because I think Joy Cons are a good idea. I do mm-hmm. like Joy Cons. I don't. Uh, and obviously, there'd be an advantage of saying, "Hey, your same Joy Cons are going to work here," but it's going to limit you design wise. And also, the Joy Cons clearly had a lot of problems. Now you could still make it so new Joy Cons are are better and old Joy yeah, Joy Con too, right? So I don't know. I I think they're going to want it somehow to be in a way where old Joy Cons can work, or maybe they won't. Maybe it'll be like, hey, you got to buy more controllers because guess what? Are expensive. That pink Joy Con we're selling you right now, throw it in the trash. Yeah, so I could kind of see that one going either way. Honestly, uh, mm. I, I do still expect there to be some kind of controller like snappy thing though. I like I like the snapping. It's fine. It's fine. Right, it makes sense. It, it works. Mm-hmm. All right. Um, c- another thing you're actually from Bloomberg's um, Takahashi Machizuki. Uh, sorry for saying that wrong. Uh, uh, talk. Looking at shipment display data or display shipment data. Excuse me. Uh, it's claiming that Nintendo is aiming to produce more than 10 million units of this new console in the first fiscal year. Kind of incredible that we have info like this uh, supposedly for a system that hasn't been announced yet. So 10 million mm-hmm. units in the first year. I think they're going to sell a lot of the new Switch, obviously. But 10 million units is a lot. Hopefully that mm-hmm. means we aren't going to have any kind of crazy shortages or this thing where scalpers are going absolutely crazy. Children are crying. Parents can't get one for <laughs> Christmas. It'll be a hot commodity for sure. But hopefully it won't be some disaster or can't find. People are freaking out and getting trampled in the evening news kind of thing. And maybe again, this is why this is taking so long. Maybe Nintendo wants to like stockpile a launch well, supply so that they can come out big. Maybe I mean I'm sure they've been stockpiling. I this is always this is relatively been a time frame that I'm not too surprised by, right? Like I mean, gosh. So what Switch uh, one came out? What year would that have been now? It's uh, 2017. March of yeah. 2017. So we this March it will have officially been. 
AJ, do the math. I'm not doing it. I don't want to think. Seven years, Mike. Thank you. Seven years. Fantastic. Well, you were actually asking me. Okay. Yeah. Well, I I think I brought you here to look pretty. Yeah. Do the work. Uh, Seven and a half years. Eh, That seems right. That seems right these days. So we'll take it. All right. Last thing here, AJ. Uh, Well, actually, second last thing, but they're related. (laughs) Universal Theme Parks has released a kind of reveal trailer finally for Epic Universe. This is the third Orlando park that they are building. This is the one that is going to include the Orlando version of Super Nintendo World. Now, we have Super Nintendo World in California. Over there, it is just the Mario Kart ride and um, some shops and the Toadstool Cafe and some other interactive experiences. This is going to have all that, plus the Slow Yoshi ride and the Donkey Kong Country extension area that will include a Donkey Kong Country themed roller coaster that has this really interesting tech where you're, the track you're on is actually kind of a fake track, so it looks like you're doing the jumps like you do in those levels. Um, this is coming in 2025. We know a lot of info about this, AJ, from s- sort of following theme park insiders and stuff like that. This mm-hmm. is Universal's official big kind of coming out party for this theme park and in everything, uh, or at least kind of all the major lands got, that are going to be there, this central area that really does feel like an actual park. They said putting the park back in theme park, a how to train your dragon land. I like those movies. That's fun. The dark universe is back because they have a classic universal monster themed land. And uh, of course there had to be a Harry Potter land. Somewhat hilariously, this one is themed around uh, Paris from that one movie that bombed, but I guess they couldn't change plans, although the actual ride will take place in the London uh, Ministry of Magic. Well, again, uh, they, they, yeah, they, they refer to it as the Ministry... World, was it uh, Wizarding World of Harry Potter Ministry of Magic? They don't say anything about Fantastic Beasts right. anymore. No, no, they don't use those words, but it is still like... Like, the design was already pulled up, and the premise were already filed for that Paris thing that they had from that third Fantastic Beasts movie. So that's what you get, I guess. But I think you're going to use like a flu shoot or whatever they do in those movies, right? To teleport or the phone bo- boost, whatever it is, to teleport to the, the flu network. Magic. Yes, and that'll be where the um, that'll be where the ride is, and it'll be themed on that. The central area will also have a dueling coaster with a kind of shooting star theme of sorts. We know there's a How to Train Your Dragon coaster, and uh, there's going to be a ride. Now, this stuff is more just what we've been finding out from insiders, unless the official word Universal. The uh, the the the, mo- the classic monsters ride that's going to take place in Dracula's uh, castle. Where's a Frankenstein's castle? Somebody's castle is going to use that same Kuko arm technology that Harry Potter and the Forbidden Journey uses, which was the first mm-hmm. big Harry Potter ride. So, yeah, there, so there's also the uh, the Wolfman roller coaster that has the spinning vehicles. Oh, I will be sure to never go on that. <laughs> uh, so big theme park. They've been building this for quite a while, and this is going to be the home of the Nintendo offerings in Orlando. They're going to have a ton of space here. It's a very spacious looking park in general. Uh, if you've ever been to Universal Hollywood, it's a fun park. It's a very cramped park because it's literally built mm-hmm. on a hill next to their actual studio there. Like You literally have to take a series of escalators to get between the two halves of the park. Um, it's a lot of fun, but when they put things in there, like the new Super Nintendo World, it is really crammed in there. They have a lot more space to play around with here, including expansion pads for uh, future ideas. So, mm-hmm. 2025, how excited are you? Very excited. Um, I think Universal's done a lot of good stuff in recent years, uh, and they're willing to spend a lot of money right now, which it, sure uh, are. it, it, it feels like what happened, I hope when they first built the first Wizarding World and it kind of put Disney on blast and they had to answer with things like Galaxy's Edge and Pandora. And, you know, the joke is that they've built this entire park in like as long as it took Disney Disney to build the Tron ride, which is a clone of a ride they already built. So I'm hoping this kind of reignites that feud again in a way. Um, Yeah, everything we've seen of this park looks absolutely incredible. Uh, The Nintendo stuff... Uh, like I said, a lot of it is kind of coming from Japan, and they're also getting the Donkey Kong expansion in Japan, so we're kind of g- get those m- close to each other. I don't know if, what the timeline those is. Might for open theirs. a little bit earlier, I think. Yeah, yeah. Um, but just just the stuff they're doing is so different than anything that exists in the theme park, like the, the way the Donkey Kong ride works, or um, uh, e- even they have this other ride in How to Train Your Dragon. It's like this, like uh, 
looks like a spinner kind of thing, but you have like a little dragon wing, so it looks like you'll have like some control of how you like fly through the air on this thing. Again, we don't know because it's not anything that exists. Um, so it's pretty exciting. I mean, a new theme park is always exciting. It's a big deal. Mm-hmm. Hasn't happened uh, in a long time. In Orlando, uh, really since, anyways. Since An- yeah, I mean, really since... Uh, Am- well, no, I guess California Adventure is the most recent Right, but just North Orlando, American we haven't park. had a major new theme park from, at least from Universal or Disney in Orlando since... Uh, yeah, I was an adventure, I guess, yeah. <laughs> actually. No, Mike, Volcano Bay yeah. is a theme park. No, the water park doesn't count. It's nice. I'm glad you have yeah. a nice water park. We're actually going to Universal uh, relatively soon, AJ. We're yeah, in a month. Kind of, kind of a long weekend trip uh, for your 40th birthday, which is coming up, which is mm-hmm. weird to say. At least you're not as old as Jeff Grubb. Yeah, right. but, uh, <laughs> That's right. Yeah, he'll, he'll, he'll forever be older than me. Thank right. God. But hey, we'll have fun there. We'll... Um, you know, Epic Universe won't be anything yet, but we'll be able to check out all the current offerings. Which so you, there are so a you, ton of. you did you did see they um they posted a video to their Instagram that was supposed to be a little behind the scenes of some of the construction. And in one of the clips, uh, Alan Numa was there uh, with Miyamoto I, with Miyamoto. And uh, everyone's like, what's Alan Numa doing there? That's he's the Zelda guy. And they like just deleted the video. Yeah. Um. <laughs> So this was actually this actually was the next thing. Um right. So yes, the uh Anuma was walking around Universal at some point with a hard hat and looking at stuff with Miyamoto. Um I I may have even known about this in some way, but he was able to say something for like when this actually happened, which was some time ago. Um let's all put two and two together here, everybody. <laughs> like what 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 do you think after this Mario stuff opens? And you know, Pokemon well, So here's all here's here's all the rumors. So it's not going to go next to the Mario and Donkey Kong stuff. The rumor is that the shutdown Lost Continent section of Islands of Adventure, which was until recently the uh, Lost Temple of Poseidon and the long since dormant Sinbad's Adventure show, that whole area is earmarked to become a Zelda area, with the restaurant Mythos becoming the Great Deku Tree restaurant. So that makes a lot of sense. They got a ton of space there that's like literally not being used. And I mean, that, that's the, great. the show building for that walkthrough attraction is a ruined temple. So yeah. it would be the it's easiest like, like, yeah, thing. You're, you're halfway there. It'd be the easiest thing in the world to rethink to Zelda. Um, mm-hmm. Then the other rumor is that at the Universal Studios Park, where the Simpsons stuff is, now that Disney owns the Simpsons, they don't want to pay that fee anymore because that contract is coming up in 2026, I believe, uh, that a Pokemon area will be going in its place. And in Japan, they actually just closed their Spider-Man ride and have confirmed that that will be a Pokemon experience. Or is that confirmed or is that still rumored? I can't. I, I can look that up real quick. But yeah. I know they closed the ride, but but the, the, either it's confirmed the supposition is Pokemon is going to both those areas in the respective parks. Yeah. So, yeah, Poke- Pokemon is coming to Universal Studios uh, Japan. We, we didn't know about uh, that. Um, or you know, I forget exactly what's rumored. It's not nothing confirmed for the U.S. parks, although you would think something's happening. But yeah, look, mm-hmm. um, the Nintendo stuff has already been a big hit. What franchises do you think you're going to do after you hit up Mario? Right? I mean, of course, it's right. Pokemon, which requires a bit more of like a bit more work to line up. Right? You have to talk to a few different people than just the Nintendo people. But the Zelda thing is the easiest thing in the world. Right? I'm not saying that like I, I'm, you know, I'm going to stand here here and confirm it. But I would sure uh, bet a lot on it, right? Like, of course, Anuma was there to talk about it. Why else would he be right. there? And, of course, the, the expectation there is there'll be some sort of water ride, maybe riding the the, the, the um, King of King Red of Lions. King of Red Lions. Yeah, thank you. I, was like, I started to say it, no. and I was like, why doesn't that sound right? But, yeah, like, like that'd be the easiest thing. Like, like we, we there's been all kinds of interesting development in boat tech. Uh, like the Pirates of the Caribbean ride in Shanghai. Watch a they video of that if you really haven't. Really cool with that. Yeah, watch, go look. Go Google that after this show. Yeah, go watch, uh, go go watch Pirates of the Caribbean Shanghai and have your mind blown. Yeah, just imagine that as a Wind Waker ride. Now, boy, I would sure be happy if it was a Wind Waker ride. I, part of me is like they're gonna want to do something that's more like you know connected to Breath of the Wild or Tears of the Kingdom at this point, or even Ocarina of Time as opposed to Wind Waker. Who knows, though? Who knows? Maybe it's something right. that's boat themed, but still maybe more in the modern style. I still want I want to be shocked at the next Zelda game is a boat game again. I think it's time we have a boat right. Zelda. So, um, uh, yeah, uh, Brian Corliss says, like, maybe they're just showing in the park while they're talking up doing movie meetings. That's a possibility, Brian. But um, I don't know. Yeah, like, but the not? difference there is that if they were doing that, they'd be in Hollywood, not in Orlando. And they would also. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Plus, again, they're wearing hard hats. They're going to construction areas. 
Um, yeah. Which again, maybe they want to show them that for whatever reason. Normally, though, if you're doing mm-hmm. like, if you're showing a VIP the park, you just show them the park. They don't have to wear yeah. hard hats and kind of get involved in the construction. It could be nothing. Again, I just not like you know, I'm not I'm not really saying it's absolutely happening, but boy, it sure seems like it's happening, doesn't it? All yeah. right. Well, that's it. For All right, the- that segment of the show was brought to you by 90s Disney. There you go. Please visit 90sdisney.com, et cetera, et cetera. Which, which is funny because the next 90s Disney is about video games because I've been. it's going to be about <laughs> Castle of Illusion. And we're recording that tomorrow. So, hey. Yeah. Um, all right. So uh, we're going to take a little break. Uh, we're going to read some super chats when we get back. I know we've got a few of those. Thank you so much. If you send in a super chat, everybody, anything you want to talk about, any questions for me or AJ, any uh, anything mean you want to say about Jeff while he's not here, we will be reading the Super Chats very soon. At least to start, we will always read all of the Super Chats, even if they come in after this segment. Don't worry. We're going to take a short break, and then we'll be right back. Thank you to all the products and services that support this podcast, especially the Knife Missile, the Raytheon cells. Knife Missile? Yeah, it's a Knife Missile. Isn't that just a bow and arrow? No, it's a missile <laughs> that when it hits the target, it explodes in and she shoots a lot of knives. Oh, I see. I do mm. like that. So, so a grenade. <laughs> a grenade launcher. No, no. No, no. It's a missile. Okay. I mean, a missile is uh, technically a missile. Anything's a missile. If I throw a rock, that's a missile, right? Like a missile is just some kind of projectile. Yeah, I, I don't think that's right. quite how that works. I, I think, think it needs to be propulsion. I don't know if like, a missile no, no, needs propulsion. Is, propulsion. Mm, that makes sense, propulsion? yeah. Propulsion? Yeah. I thought it was like... There, uh, no, yeah, otherwise it's just a projectile. projectile. But then I think it's a yeah. rocket yeah. missile. I, I think... Are those I not synonyms? I don't know. I think, I they, think they're hang on, let's semantics. See. Let's see. I, I think the missile is the weapon and the rocket is Do- the propulsion. Dr. Ryan says I'm right and they're a doctor. <laughs> oh, you got me there. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> We're going to be learning about missiles soon anyway. Okay, here we go. Yeah. A, a rocket is a vehicle that uses a rocket engine to propel itself at high speeds. A missile is a kind of rocket, but one that is self-propelled, guided, and designed to be used as a weapon. So rockets aren't weapons, but missiles are, I guess. I don't know. I guess, yeah. There, yeah there's, there, I, I'm looking at There's, there's two the different Yeah, you just read one definition, AJ. This is a, this is a very specific <laughs> definition. You did a bad job. Yeah, there's a lot, a lot of saying. nuance in rockets My, and Mike, missiles. Yeah. Mike's <laughs> technically right. One of the definitions is an object which is forcibly propelled at a target. So yeah. there you go. All right. All right. I and mean, we're both right, really. We're all friends. Uh all right. it's great. Yeah. Everyone man, things are so nice when Jeff's not here. I yeah, like right, this. Mike. Yeah it's, yeah. yeah, it's no like argument or anything. We're gonna whatever. We're okay, gonna... Miss Element it was sponsored by Raytheon. Thank you so much. Ah. <laughs> All right. thing, our, our, our topic isn't very argumentative this week, so so you guys need to send an argumentative super chat so that'll get Mike and I mad at each other. Yeah, sure. That's when the real fun begins. Speaking of, why don't we uh, get back to it? You ready, AJ? Oh, I'm ready. Okay. And we're back. AJ, why don't you read those super chats, please? All right. And as I'm reading them, you guys should hit that like button because yes. it needs to go higher or Mikey please. won't be happy. Yes. I'm, I'm furious right now. So you gotta all improve my mood or something. Yeah. All right. Big Fresh Thirty Seven says: Are gaming companies that remain privately owned able to avoid all this layoff madness better than public ones? Yes. Uh, I think they just, don't. They just shut down usually. <laughs> Sometimes. I, th- I think it helps. It definitely does give them a little bit of wiggle room. They don't have shareholders to report to, right? You know, if you if you're if you're a private company, it doesn't necessarily matter. You have a bad quarter, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, and as long as you know, like, good times are coming or you're working on a game, it, it could be pretty different. It's when you're a public company, and you have to worry about quarters, and you have to, you know, worry about the line always going up and always being able to say we grew by so-and-so, and blah, blah, blah. Then you don't have to panic and think, oh, no, our number isn't going to be as high as we want it to be. What's something we can do to make number higher or to at least make it look like to our investors that we are trying to get number higher? Well, you do layoffs, right? Now, there's mm-hmm. obviously economic situations that are also at play that could still impact private companies, but public ones definitely seem more susceptible here. Yes, agreed. Chrono Rig, who has been a Lincoln member for 21 months, says, mm-hmm. just curious, is Nintendo pretty much done with the actual hardware and now just working on the marketing and manufacturing? Just curious about the process. It's, it's entirely possible. We don't know. 
at this point, think, I, Mike? they have to have that locked down at this point. I mean, right. They got to be developing building, the games. Yeah. They're stockpiling. Right. Well, they're building games already. So the architecture has to be nailed down. Um, I mean, they're building the hardware at this point. I assume certain things are coming off of, you know, production lines right now. So, uh, yeah, I, I don't think there's a chance to make much in the way of alterations this late in the game. Oh, I wonder, like, how late an alteration the system ever got. Like, we know that PlayStation 3 got six axis relatively late in the game. Mm-hmm. You can see it can kind of get away with that. That doesn't really change well, did, anything. Didn't crazy. the Sega Saturn, like, didn't they just throw in another chip at the last minute? And well, we I, saw how that went. Relatively last minute, right. And that's, yeah, that was a, that system had a weird architecture to it. I found some more of our Saturn games, by the way. Oh, what'd you find? Oh, I opened up some other case for some PlayStation 1. I opened up the PlayStation 1 case, and it's like the tall case for Bust to Move 2 Arcade Edition. And mm. on top of that disc, it also had our Panzer Dragoon disc in there. We did not take good care of our disc, and it's upsetting. Uh, but full of children. I got it now, so I have it in our, our binder, at least. At nice. some point, I got to pl- try plugging in the Saturn into the retro tank here. I'm a little yeah. stuck with my PlayStation at the moment. <laughs> I, got, <laughs> I got some business to attend to there. Very nice. All right. Willow Davis says, life is a video game and I beat it every day. Listen, incredible. It's okay to take a break and recover a little bit, too. Incredible. Who did that? Willow Davis. Thank you, Willow Davis. I don't know why I'm thanking you. Good work. Yeah. Thank you for your service. Uh, T Bucket 23 says, just want to say that yesterday I got all the achievements in Star Wars Episode One Racer. Oh, yeah. Awesome that a childhood favorite game is the sixth game I've ever 100% or gotten all achievements for. Mike, I think you guys might have talked about this recently, but what games have you 100%ed or, or gotten all the achievements or trophies for? I, I, if I 100% a game, to be honest to me, that rarely like correlates with what the achievements think is 100%ing, right? Like, I sure mm-hmm. feel like I did everything in neon white, but I didn't get all the achievements. Uh, <laughs> right. Which is wild. Right. Um, I mean, I did 100% Mario Odyssey in pretty undisputable terms. I did the same thing with uh, Pikmin 4 recently and with Super Mario Brothers Wonder. Those are pretty undisputable. I, I think mm-hmm. I like doing it. I think I like doing it more when there isn't a trophy system because then sometimes the <laughs> achievement, it's not necessarily like completing game content. It's like, go over here and do this emote at this time to this thing. So this happens. Right. And I'm like, eh, I don't really care about that. And the uh, the two examples in my mind that come up is uh, I know I, I 100%ed Castlevania Aria of Sorrow. That's my favorite nice. Castlevania game. Uh, in fact, I met um, Igarashi at a signing event in L.A. And it's hard to sign a Game Boy cartridge. So I actually had him sign my GBA SP. So I have that, which is cool. Um and I did, I think the only PlayStation game I've ever platinumed is Batman Arkham Asylum. For some reason, I found every trophy in that game, which was literal trophies, because you had to find all the Riddler trophies for one of the uh, right. unlocks. Yeah, I, try to, yeah, I like that game a lot. I'm not even sure if I have platinumed a PlayStation game. I think that's the only one I have. I'll have to look at my profile, but I'm pretty sure it's the only one I've ever platinumed. Yeah. I just never really cared. Like, I, I don't mind getting achievements and stuff like that. I think it's fun sometimes. Yeah, but... it's almost more like delightful when they pop up than it is like, oh, I got to get this achievement. I, yeah, I always get I always get like a little annoyed. People are like, oh, like platinuming this game. It should be better. Like, that was like a complaint for Crash 4. It's like, it's just, <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, who cares? Did you play the game. Did you have fun? Yeah, Did you like beat it? playing it. Uh, Did you I, beat it like Willow Davis beats oh, it every God. day? I, but I, I get it. If that's like something you're really interested in. Then sure, um, that could be a design space that you find especially intriguing. Man, episode one racer rules. When I played that again last year or so, mm-hmm. it's I so love much. That again. I think that's if your racing game's gonna have a boost system, I think that's the best boost system I've ever seen in it's a, a game. It's a good it's a good risk where, reward boost system. Right. Yeah. Where you kinda have to be holding up in order to build up the boost. So when you're doing that, obviously your ability to turn left or right is greatly diminished. So I don't know. It just feels fantastic. I ooh. Love episode one racer. I'm kind of mm-hmm, ready to mm-hmm. play it again, actually. Right? Yeah, let's do it. Dan the Brad says, will Switch 2 come with a dock or will Nintendo stop pretending to be in the home console business, go handheld only, and sell the dock separate? I think it has to come with a dock. It'll come with a dock. With 400 bucks, it better come with a dock still. <laughs> like, yeah, a, yeah, seriously. Um, No, I think it's going to have it's gonna have a dock, especially if they want to put the words 4K on the box, because I don't think yeah. the, it's not like the handheld screen is going to be in 4K. I don't there'd be no, no, no yeah. point to do that so maybe on a dock it'll output into 4k i suppose <laughs> even then it's a little mm-hmm. it still kind of seems strange to me for some reason even though 4k is hardly new tech 
Um, right. No, we're still getting a dock. H- HD wasn't new when the Wii U came out too. So, right, incredible. Uh, Durachi says, "What dumb old Nintendo franchise deserves a theme park?" My vote goes to Clue Clue Land. It has land right in the name. Well, hmm. my go-to is always Star Tropics, just because I want another theme park uh, tiki bar in this instance, right? <laughs> That's pretty good. I yeah. would say, let's do specifically Super Mario Land Two. You want to go to the Mario Land in Super Mario Land 2? Yes, it's very different from all the other Mario stuff. I want to be in a giant clock and have bunny ears. What's that Devil World game where the devil points at the screen and then scrolls? How about just a world where that devil character chases kids? (laughs) There you go. Or Tingle's Rupee Land, right? Tingle's Rupee Land will be fine. That'd be fun. Uh, Darachi's Meshes has a big glowing 20 next to it. Does that mean something? Uh, It means there's 20 of Super Chat in a row or something like that. Oh, good job. You did it. That's fun. Oh, there it is. Let's celebrate their 20th Super. Okay, got it. Hooray! Uh, the Uncharted Wolf says, Jeff is so wrong about Crash Bandicoot, right, he guys? He really is. It's weird. I uh, I forced him to watch me play some Crash 2 because I was testing out my retro tank, and I was I was berating him the whole time. Don't worry. Just, tell, just telling him how much fun I'm having, which really proves that I'm having fun. Uh, yeah. um, That's how you know. It's like when you explain a joke. Just really hard on uh, platforming franchises that aren't Mario, I think. <laughs> like, he's got big issues yep. with Sonic. He's got big issues with Crash. I don't think he's he's much for Spyro either. So I think he just, I think, um, look, I get it. None of them are as good as Mario, for sure. But it doesn't mean that they need to be that good to be good and to be appreciated. So you're just a bad person, and he's wrong about yeah, this. Yeah, yeah. Sure. That, that's accurate. That's accurate. And finally, for now, El Grug says, Mike, better beat Fujin tomorrow. That's right. Uh, you going to do it, Mike? Yes, I have to. Is it that, the day? There is a time. Like, I can't just do it all day because um, I think so. We start like club at 2.30, I think. I think that's right. Uh, and then uh, maybe it's 1.30. But uh, like at 4 or whatever, or is it 5? No, at 5. It's 2.30 we start Eastern. And then mm-hmm. at 5 is the, five uh, PlayStation, is the PlayStation State of Play. Thing. So we got to be ready for that. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I got to beat Fujin, man. I can't. It, it's it's rough to spend a whole like two and a half hour episode being stuck on one level after you were mm-hmm. on there for a good portion of the last episode. It can't happen again. <laughs> it can't happen <laughs> again. Oh, um, but it could. Somebody it could. somebody made a tips video for me and I watched that. And as I predicted, like the, the next ability I would get if I level up is a diagonal ice shot, which seems like it's mm-hmm. made to fight. So would be I, helpful. What I'm here's my strategy going into tomorrow is I'm actually going to have to spend some time learning a good ground combo so I can actually beat up all of these minions and get XP from killing them and level up so I get that ability. I can't just be running past them. I need to be killing them and leveling up, but I need to learn a combo so I can do that. And I can also use that combo on Fujin. It seems like if I really like rush him down, like really stay on him, that might be helping me. So that's probably also part of uh, the strategy. So we have a strategy going into tomorrow. Getting two Fujins not too bad anymore. I hope there might be a little bit of rust to, you know, <laughs> clean off when we get back in there. But we'll be fine. We'll get there. We'll see level there three tomorrow. Go. All right. And then uh, Kama Wood says, "Why is Jeff holding back on Ridge Racer?" Yeah. Uh, well, he, uh, he, every- he he hates fun and happiness. That's uh, why. Look, okay, let's go easy on Jeff. I, he's probably really deep into his investigation right now. You know, he's got uh, a lot of sources that have to be protected. Uh, I think he's in chat right now. A lot of ins, a lot of outs. Right. I mean, I know he's really looking into this one for me. He's going to, I mean, Tekken 8 seems like it's doing really well. So I imagine all that money is being funneled into the Ridge Ridge Racer project. Hopefully be called Mm -hmm. Ridge Racer 8 so we can have another 8 game come out this year. I would be a big fan of that. But um, I saw what Sony or the the PlayStation Twitter account was like, what's your favorite 8 game ever? I was thinking about this a lot. And it has to... it has to either have an eight in the title, and no, I don't mean like 1080. I know you're all very funny. Uh, <laughs> or like an allusion to an eight. Like infinite wealth counts for me because that infinity thing's like an eight, and then like yeah. Resident Evil Village counts because it like makes an eight if you look at the highlighted right stuff. Right. So what do you think is the best eight game of all time? Because mm. like I'll tell you, like some of the ones is that people it- are saying. I mean, Mario Kart 8. Uh, a lot of people Mega like Man, Mario Kart 8. You know, it's not Mega Man 8. It's not Mega I Man like 8. I like Mega Man 8 a lot. Uh, it looks like very fine, good. But it's not. Yeah. It's not. It's not Mar- Mario Kart 8 is good. You know me. I, I just like Mario Kart. I don't love Mario Kart. 
mad though. Like, get out of here. I don't know. Wait, that's funny. Yeast Eight's pretty good. Drag- actually. Yeah, Dragon Quest Eight. I like Dragon uh, Quest Eight. I just kind of stopped. I was a little burnt out on Dragon Quest. I think Final Fantasy Eight is very good. It's interesting how. Like p- people have come back around on that one at the moment. That was the answer I saw yeah, the most. That, ben Sorrow will back you up on that yeah. one, so that's good. I think it might just be Tekken Eight, to be honest. Tekken Eight's very good. Tekken- yeah, I still say Mario. I mean, I haven't played Tekken, I guess, but I oh, say Tekken Mario Kart better than Mario Kart Eight. Come on, give me a break. Um, no, I didn't get it, but uh, I think it's Tekken Eight right now. All right, that's it for super chats for now. Uh, that is it. All right, that's it for that for now, everybody. If you have any more Super Chats, we will absolutely get to those. Thank you so much. Ooh, Tony asked Project 8. That would count. Not that it's that great a game, Duncan Hart, but at <laughs> least you came up with a new one. Um, oh, we got a Super Chat right there, right there. Oh, right okay. <clears throat> Mike from yes. Burrito. Yes. He says, Mike, how about this strat? Have you considered starting over and racking up as many lives and XP as possible to crossing into level two? Good luck tomorrow. Also, can I get a small wolf and a big wolf? Cheers. Which one do you want, <laughs> small or big? Uh, I'll take the small one. There you go. There's the big wolf. There we go. There you go. Um, no, Galaxy Two does not count as Mario Eight. No, it's no, it's a main line, but they stopped the numbering, so it's over. It's over. There's no even allusions yeah. to the number. Although Mario, I love Mario Kart for like never doing numbers until seven. That's beautiful. <laughs> that yeah. is actually going back to numbers. <laughs> that is my favorite thing Mario Kart has ever done <laughs> is bringing numbers out of nowhere into the equation. <laughs> the sequential like, Mario numbers. Mario Kart 3D was right there, and they're like, nah. nah. This one is Mario Kart 7, actually. Like, who's was like... Cause, well, cause at the time, it was because they were doing, like, a casino thing, right? Like, Lucky 7s. Then that... No, oh, that's right. Then with 8, they did it because they kind of liked the, the, the track. It looked like a track, I guess, in 8. So, well, it was the infinite symbol again. Because, right. Because, like, you could go upside down and make a Mo- Mobius yeah, strip. Yeah, exactly. That kind of thing. All right, very interesting conversation right, you, there. You, 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 you gonna do that chat, Mike? You gonna you gonna farm some lives? Um, I don't. I'm not sure. I'm gonna. I want to just try going through this level, see if I can level up normally this way. We might have to just start a game over at some point. And, and I don't know how much <laughs> farming you can do. Enemies do respawn, I suppose. I think they do. Now I'm not 100 percent sure. I, I I can't. I don't know if I can actually farm enemies in this game. We'll have to find out. Because, yeah, mm-hmm. we might need to do that. Because I, I don't think level two enemies are, like, worth worth, worth more experience than level one enemies in this game. So I'm not sure. <laughs> we'll see. All right. What's, um, how about me and you start the topic, AJ, and then we'll take a break. Okay. But the topic this week is uh, Game Boy Advance Hidden Gems. We've been going through Nintendo consoles here. Now we're up to the Game Boy Advance, one of the all-time great Nintendo consoles of all time. But also... A console for a lot of shovelware on it, I think. A lot of mm-hmm. licensed games. Tons of licensed games. Like, they stopped yes. making licensed games for home consoles. And if you had a Nickelodeon Cartoon Network show, unless you were, like, one of the really big ones, like a Jimmy Neutron or SpongeBob SquarePants, your shit was going only on Game Boy Advance. Uh, so there's a lot of that, but a lot of good stuff. I, I, I'm worried that I may be something of a normie Game Boy Advance player when I think about it. I maybe have a couple ideas. I don't know if there's one you have you want to go first, though. So the one that came to mind for me right away is a a, a known franchise, but a weird spinoff. And that was Sonic Battle, which was like their take on an arena brawler. Hey, where'd I go? Bring me back. Oh, sorry. I was looking up Game Boy, the specific Game Boy game on the wrong window. Go ahead. How dare you? How dare you? Sorry, yeah, audio so, I mean, listeners. Made... I accidentally got rid of AJ's video and he got mad at me. I got very upset. There. There's conflict. Oh, Arr, I hate wow. You. People love the... Uh, we're, 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 we're very <laughs> angry brothers. Mm. Uh, yeah, so this was like an arena brawler with the Sonic characters. It did this thing where it was like 2D pixel characters and 3D arenas. Um, honestly, I don't remember much else about the game, but I do remember playing a buttload of it at the time there's a lot of story content i remember yes. that and have like kind of like a cool like art style for like the character portraits they have this kind of cool like rough drawn look to them uh it was very slick i don't know I'm, I, I don't know what it was i just really liked it so everybody remembers that um the two towers and return of the king games were surprisingly good on consoles the game boy advance mm-hmm. game was actually pretty fun it was kind of a diablo like right 
They were uh, top-down, just action RPGs. You go around, kill things, and you get loot. They were fun. They were butt ugly. <laughs> not going to lie. Uh, especially, I feel like I spent a lot of that They were game- very muddy-looking games. I mean, it was, it was on the low-resolution Game Boy screen. Imagine yeah. trying to play Diablo on that. I think I remember a lot of two towers. I was in, like, the Dead Marshes as Sam or something, right? And it's yeah. lit- literally yeah. a bog. <laughs> but it yeah. was fun. So that's one that, uh, that kind of sticks out to me, especially amongst all the licensed drivel that was there but we do have a lot of answers from our community that we are going to get to in a second we are going to take a short break first everybody so we'll be right back thank you all right you know i should see if i could set it up so that we can see what like what he does here so we can see what people you can open it up um yeah i'll I'll get uh, it figured out you're a big boy I'm a bit mommy. Well, I'm a bit boy. Well, mm-hmm. yeah, I'm building a stick to well, whoop like your a fighting asses. game stick. Oh, nice. Yeah, that sounds fun. I don't like sticks. I I think I just finally should have decided. I just want a level to play Tekken. I think I have. Let's see if I can un. Flip this. Unflip. Um, mm-hmm. <laughs> Trans- where's transform? Transform. Flip. There we go. I'm getting there. We can still keep AJ. We made a, We did. We, we had a tournament on the on the weekend. A Tekken tournament with the community. Yeah, I wasn't able to Pretty join fun. because of uh the Royal Rumble. But it sounds like you get all had fun. We can. Yeah, it was fun. We can do it again if you want to. I'd like to yeah. we'll get Chef back. Yeah, we'll do it again at some point for sure. Hey, do we might not see your picture for a second here while we do this segment. Just so you know. Oh, but I had a visual gag for one of these. Right, oh. Second. Look, I don't know what to tell you. What if we you mean you have a visual gag? I have a visual gag for one of these. Crying out loud. Okay, one second. <laughs> I'll uh, make a second one. Probably shouldn't have done that like that. That's okay. Like that. And then another source. Let's capture Discord again. <laughs> I'm going to have to really uh really re- redo this at some point. Okay, fine. This wouldn't happen if Jeff was here. Yeah, calm down. I'm getting there. <laughs> It's gonna look terrific once we once we're done. You'll see. Are you sure about that? Yep, it's good. It's coming out. Are you great sure already. about that? It's really, it's coming in, <laughs> coming in really that's nice. A, that's, are you sure about? That's a thing you should leave a bit. I said you should. Oh right, right. Are you sure about? That? That's one of those things where I read it, so don't actually know how he says it in the show. And like I feel like if I actually hear it, I'll be upset because it doesn't sound like how it does in my head. Well, I really common problem everybody has. I really stitched this together with uh, hopes and prayers, everybody. But I think I got it. There you go. <laughs> there it is. It's not like Chef does it differently. Yeah, I know. There you go. It's All right. Enough. Chad, you know what Chef? Uh, what message Chef sent me? I don't remember if it was yesterday or today. He was like. Uh, oh, Christian, you know that uh, I figured out that if I turned down the the gain on my mic, that live show would have sound a thousand times better. <laughs> I'm like, well, we live and we learn. We live and we live learn. and learn. Living on so, the yeah. edge of tomorrow. All right, let's get back Just, to it. Okay. All right, AJ. Uh, <clears throat> never mind. We'll do a better show than that. Yeah. And we are back. Let's see what the community has to say when it comes to Game Boy Advance Hidden Gems. Okay. Low Rule kicks us off with Sword of Mana. Was an awesome remake of the first Seiken Densetsu game. Hope we get this on Switch Online soon, since there is no easy way to play this game currently. 
I could think of some easy ways to play all these games, but well, you know, I never, I never, you know, I, I, uh, I've never gotten into any of the mana games really. I actually, um, uh, the only one I have beaten was the sort of mana that came out on, uh, Vita, uh, which is a, a oh, different okay. remake than this one. Even I'm not. I, this one might even might even supposed to be better. I'm not sure, but hmm. I did like it. This, the first, um. Second Densetsu is interesting. This was the one that was Final Fantasy Adventure originally, and it is very Final Fantasy, the first one. Like, there's a Chocobo, there's, like, a Red Mage. It was straight up just a Final Fantasy spinoff that sort of became its own thing, starting with the sequel, Secret of Mana, right? So, mm-hmm. yeah, uh, I always like this box art, too. It looks pretty. So, um, Sword yeah. of Mana is one I would definitely be happy to check out. Yeah. Jamie H1224 says, My pick goes to Lord of the Rings The Return of the King. Like the two towers, this was also an enjoyable Diablo-like, which expanded on the systems and introduced more playable characters. As the Fellowship run very different paths to the stage of the trilogy, there was lots of replay value. Yes, yeah, so this is the one that I actually brought up myself just a little bit ago, mm-hmm. right? Uh, so yeah, I'm glad uh, somebody immediately already agrees with me. Which uh, yeah. Yeah. Very, very heartwarming to see that it has the official product movie trilogy Lord of the Rings sticker on the box, so you know it's good. EA games had that weird like thing on on their packages that weird kind of like bottom like swirl thing. So you yeah, know, that that little yeah. So you knew it was from EA because EA means quality. That's right. All right, casual submits Ham Taro, Ham Ham Heartbreak. You ever play Ham Taro, Mike? No, but this is these games were made by Nintendo. Uh, I desperately want to play these. Like, uh, if you like play Smash, one of the Smash Brothers, and it lists like all of the games made by Nintendo at some point, these Ham Taro games show up which is funny to see. They're supposed to be good. I hope that they uh, show up on NSO sometime. That'd be a lot of fun. Mm-hmm. Bop World says, most underrated Sonic game of all time, IMO. It's got some flaws. It definitely isn't a traditional Sonic game, but it's a good time. That is Sonic Battle. My man, we are in lockstep. Yeah, there was like an o- there was some kind of OC character in Sonic Battle, if I remember. Some kind yeah, of robot it was a little dude. robot. Yeah. yeah, yeah, some robot guy. Start with an E. I forget the I- name. As far as like a a sprite based 3D arena fighter goes, it works much better than you think it would. I'll give mm-hmm. I'll give Sonic Battle that, I suppose. THQ made that game too. I forgot about that. That's huh. weird. That's weird. Yeah, right. I did not. I not. I didn't forget about that. I don't know if I ever knew that somehow. Yeah, right. <laughs> all Next. right. Hosp says, "Hate to get all you can, you guys, but having just discovered my favorite ever football player." Steven Gerrard on the cover must mean it's a hidden gem, and thus I must own it now. Steven Gerrard's Total Soccer 2002. And, uh, yeah, oh, you'll AJ, never you walk got, alone. All right, AJ's, AJ's got his Liverpool scarf. It, yeah, Gerrard, Ger- unfortunately, with, with Jurgen Klopp's uh, uh, retirement announced, uh, his name came up a couple times as a replacement, but he's coaching in Saudi Arabia now, which is a bummer. Uh, I don't think it'll be him. I hope it's Zabi. I like Zabi as the the new manager. It just, yes, it just well, there's his there's, there's your football talk. Uh, I'm this on, I love this thing. Next, <laughs> Mr. Bowler submits some of the best box art ever with uh, Carnage. When they say "Don't judge a book by its cover," they're talking about Carnage Rally. A game much better than its box art would suggest. Yeah, it's her. so the box what art for this I can't see. I don't know. There's like there, there's like a jackass jackass reject character with blue hair. I just don't know. Like his hair like, looks like it tastes like wild that, raspberry. You're like, is that his shoulder or is that like a road with a floating head? But no, it's his, he's wearing a shirt. Yeah, it's very it's upsetting. very strange. I don't like it. <laughs> Always be clothing slash corgi says Karu Karu Karuin, which like I feel like like the secrets out on that one like we all know about it now. It's super fun. I that was like when all those um, Game Boy NSO games came out. This one was such a good time. I first played this because of Arcade Pit. Actually, it's super fun. I love it. Mm-hmm. Go for a new one. Tommy Pencil says there's never been another game like it. That's probably true. Woody Woodpecker's Crazy Castle 5. When they lost the Looney Tunes license, they yeah. got Woody Woodpecker. I bet that Crazy Castle 4 is kind of like it. Um, <laughs> we were talking about these Crazy Castle games because they just swap out uh, characters for these like crazy. They uh, absolutely mm-hmm. had a Looney Tunes one. There, there is, uh, There's definitely a Disney one in some territories for sure. Like I need to do... A deep dive on a uh, crazy, the crazy castle crazy series. Castle. <laughs> uh, there's a Garfield one. There's a real Ghostbusters one. 
Really? Yeah. 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 Oh, God. There is a Garfield one. Yeah. It's Woody Woodpecker is five. It was Bugs Bunny at four. Bugs Bunny in three. Yeah. It's just. Yeah. So, like, in North America, Crazy Castle, like, three or whatever, the Game Boy one, is real Ghostbusters. And then in POW, the same exact game for Game Boy is Garfield characters instead. I mean, Ghostbusters makes sense for Crazy Castle. That's incredible that you could reskin a Ghostbusters game to become a Garfield game. That is the most Garfield beautiful thing I've ever game. heard. <laughs> I love that. That's amazing. Good for them. They did it. Yes. All right. All right. Doom Little Crossing says, hopefully it won't be a hidden gem anymore soon. And that's Mario versus Donkey Kong, which is next month that remake comes Very out soon right? yeah we'll see we'll see we'll see mario versus donkey kong i don't know why I'm, mm-hmm. i've been hard i've been hard on it but it, it'll it's be because reset. it's because donkey kong 94 is so good it's so good and i just mm-hmm. i never liked the way this game looked i don't know and it kind of still carries that look into the remake even we'll see we'll see we'll see the tekken wolf 5 says don't know why this one always gets skipped over when talking about the gba castlevania games hot take i like the soundtrack and that's castlevania harmony of dissonance i I think it's fantastic. I do think my only knock yeah. against it is the soundtrack. It's not terrible, but uh, Circle of Moon and Aria Sorrow have, have better soundtracks. But it is a lot of fun. I actually think it has the best box art, too. Um, mm-hmm. Harmony of Dissonance, I think, doesn't get enough respect. It's a very good game. My, my problem with the, with this game is, like I said, I played so much Aria of Sorrow that I kind of like was like burnt out and had to skip a Castlevania. Well, this one uh, came, so out, this one came this one. out before Aria of Sorrow, actually. No, it, I thought it was after. The Circle Moon, sure what, uh, Harmony, Ar- Aria. Really? Oh, I'll bet you the house, Edge guy. Well, all right, I'll believe you. Then maybe I just skipped it for other reasons. I could have sworn. Yeah, you're right. Because then, yeah, the the, sequ- the first one in DS was a sequel to Aria Sorrow. Mm-hmm. Okay, I Thought stand I'm corrected. Sorry. Oh, you're corrected. Oh, nothing makes me oh, feel, I know. Not, nothing makes me feel better than the correcting people. It drives me crazy when people say things wrong in, in YouTube videos and I can't do anything about it. It's a <laughs> major personality trait. Like, um, there, I was just watching a uh. Like, like some fighting game video about stages. And they were talking about um, a Marvel's Capcom 3 stage that was banned. Mm-hmm. And it's, you know, it's Tron's level. Tron Bond's world. So it's called Bond World. And he calls it Bone World the entire time. And it's driving me crazy. I'm even looking in comments just to find somebody who corrects them. Yeah. I can't even find right. that. And, I, and yeah, that's like, driving no. me insane. I was like, uh, he has to know. He has to know that he's wrong. And, and, and I know more than him. It's a very toxic Mike, trait. you're wrong. It's Bond Wonderland. Anyways. Well, you. anyways, that wasn't the point. <laughs> Damn. He's, well, <laughs> Sean's, Sean's right. Apparently, that's like the only <laughs> stage that um some competitive Marvel vs. Capcom 3 players fight on because all the other, some other stages introduced lag and stuff like that. So that's interesting. <laughs> Ah, uh-huh. next. Velocity Prime 1, Jeremy, says the Klonoa series represents a lush and charming take on the 2D platformers on console, but its best entry might be the puzzle-focused GBA game, Empire of Dreams. I don't think I've ever played this. It's very good. If you like the Klonoa games on PlayStation, yeah, there's just these uh these two unique ones. I believe there's two of them on Game Boy Advance, and it's mm-hmm. that same kind Klonoa of Klonoa is, is a good franchise. They, yes. There should be more Klonoa. You should, uh, if you haven't checked out that package of uh, the first two that released last year, you should, or... Last year, year before, because that was good. Mm-hmm. All right, Teach QC says, "Heart of the cards, guide me with Yu-Gi-Oh, the sacred cards." Mike, did you ever get any Yu-Gi-Oh? No, that, that was right. That was after our time. We 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 both got we both got into Pokemon, and then mm-hmm. kind of the next wave. It was like, all right, like Yu-Gi-Oh and Bakugan and Beyblade. Like, no, nah, I'm I'm done. I'm afraid. Uh, I'll never forget. It was it was the weirdest thing to me. So I get to my freshman year of college, and there's all the other guys living on my floor in my dorm. There was this one kid who you meet him, and he was the stereotypical bro. He he was into sports. He worked out. He did all the bro stuff. But he was super into Yu Gi Oh. Like owned a PS2 just so we could play the Yu Gi Oh games on it. It was nuts. What's next? Ant the Sav says the only pinball game I will ever need: Pokemon Pinball, Ruby and Sapphire. I do like Pokemon Pinball. Ruby and Sapphire is fun. Uh, of the Game Boy Advance was probably best because that Mario Pinball game for Game Boy Advance was pretty disappointing. So if you want to... Uh, Wait, I don't remember. What the heck is the Mario Pinball game? Mario Pinball remember. Land or It's not good. It's bad. It yeah, bad I, well, I don't remember it at all. Yeah, they blew it with Weird. that one. But this is still very good. Lenny, Cool Dick Denver says, I feel like we've done this topic before because I still have this picture saved in my phone. Karu, Karu, Karuin. There it is. Yeah. Is it the same game, Karu. just different regions that we had? I think, yeah. Yeah, yeah. This is the same Karu, yep. Karu, Karuin. Okay. The other one's much better box art. Yeah. 
They were afraid to show the penguin on this one, I guess. That's right. Uh, 2X Crown Beef Hammer says, You harassed Reggie for Mother 3 localization. I harassed Doug Bowser to localize Magical Vacation. We are both never going to be happy. And what is this? Because it looks very... I mean, it's basically a Disney castle on this box art, so I'm intrigued. Yeah, it's like Disney cross with, like, uh, Strawberry Shortcake? Yeah, it actually kind of... It kind of reminds me of the, the mana... Uh, art actually a little bit too it's a little bit of everything yeah yeah i'm I'm intrigued i'm intrigued all right here's our first game boy advanced video (laughs) pick here (laughs) chaos buckaroo the true sicko of the group here says having the two best episodes to that point available at all times was incredible pokemon johto photo finish and playing with fire isn't it funny that there was like a time not that long ago, longer than I'd like to admit, where just having portable video was this insane novelty. Yeah. I was I was so disappointed because I thought I was going to get like that Game Boy Advance video version of Shrek and then put it in my Game Boy uh, player on my GameCube mm-hmm. and just watch it on Twitch like that. The Game Boy Advance player does not play these cartridges, which That's is a bullshit. Bummer. That's a bummer. <laughs> what the hell? I was so hey, sad. You know, what I, you, know, you know what I bet does play it is the uh, the analog pocket oh, on the dock. I don't know. That's a good question, actually. But well, I have mine on the dock right now. You have to give me that cartridge. We'll see what happens. Yeah, I'll have to buy Shrek. There you go. I thought uh, you had it. Okay, so you oh, so you looked this up and you didn't waste. No, your money. I didn't buy Shrek already. <laughs> Although I kind of want to. If I saw it, I'd well do at this it. Point. Yeah, yeah. All right, Octo says V Rally Three looked great on the platform. Also, I can't believe I have to say this, but Wario Land Four doesn't get enough respect. Mike, you haven't played it, and it's made by the Super Metroid team, you heathen. I played a little bit of it. For some reason, I didn't immediately get super into it. I really got into Wario Land 3. I loved that Mm -hmm. one, actually. They're both very good. You're right. I'll have to play through Wario Land 4 at some point here. Yeah, V-Rally was, uh, I believe that was one of the games that was a a 3D GBA game with polygons and stuff. Okay, yeah. It's it's weird how many kind of 3D games there were on the Game Boy Advance. And usually they did an okay job when they kind of understood the system's limitations. Yep. This is the game I've never played, and I always hear good things about it. It's uh, from Michael Riley, Ninja 5 This comes up a lot as kind of a hidden mm-hmm. gem, uh, or even just one of the best games on the system. It is Konami. Hopefully this is one we get on uh, on NSO at some point, because I really do want to play it myself here. Mm-hmm. DMC, Depressed Me Crying, says only a hidden gem because Nintendo did to this series what Grandpa Minotti did to Papa Minotti's dog. <laughs> now we have to know what happened to the rest of the Nintendogs. That's, it, that's Wario Land 4. Did you hear I told that story? I did. You forgot the dog's name. His name was Jeremy. Oh, I don't I don't remember no the way. name. Don't humanize you the dog like, to the AJ. Oh, they should have known his name Jeremy. That's messed <laughs> AJ, up. They didn't need my, to know that. Like my dad, all right? <laughs> they didn't need to know the dog's <laughs> name. I feel like it was a crucial missing part. It was story. not. Now you've humanized the dog. It's, it's much crucial worse. Because what the fuck? <laughs> it's way worse now. <laughs> Listen, Grandpa Minotti came from the old country, and that's how they did that's things. That's how they took care of then, business, and I back suppose. there. <laughs> yeah. Finally, we got Alrighty. some good fucking food. <laughs> Wind Wanker uh, presents Jim Henson's Muppets in Spy Muppets License to Croak. I am immediately intrigued. Like, is this right. is my first thought is, is this my speed run game? I have no idea what's involved in Spy Muppets License to Croak, <laughs> but I am so immediately into it. <laughs> Muppets video games are so weird because they're just, oh, this game was like also on a Disc? Is there what the hell am I even looking at? No, it has to just what? be Game Boy Advance. There was Windows version. What? Oh. There's a Microsoft Windows version of this game and a Game Boy Advance version. What is this? What <laughs> okay. What kind of game what do you what kind of game do you think this is? I mean I would assume a 2D platformer. Uh is every level an auto scroller? Oh every level is an auto scroller. You can't speed run it. What is this? <laughs> You can't even speak right. I don't I mean maybe you could. Oh my god. I mean the long play is 35 minutes. Piggy Galore. Oh, instead of Pussy Galore, it's Piggy Galore. Incredible. Man, I am so intrigued. Thank you so much for making sure I found out about uh Muppets and Spy Muppets license the croak. Thank you. <laughs> wow. All right, Willow Davis. Says, can't let anyone start this series without making it to the conclusion, Mega Man Zero Four. Most people will say Mega Man Zero Three is the best one, and I do agree, but four is still very good. And uh if you if you play if you get the three, 
just play four. It is a series that you should just play them all in a row because mm-hmm. uh, there is a continuous story. They're all very good. So, yeah, but big yes. love to four. Pablo Koss says one of the last GBA releases in a very good brawler, TMNT Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Yes. I believe this was the tie in to the animated film that was kind of the fourth movie of the original series. Right. Yes. Yeah, so this was when Ubisoft had the license. And yeah, this one is uh, supposed to be surprisingly good. I mean, at this point, yeah. if you're making a TMT game, it, it, sh- it should be a brawler. And people would try to do that and recapture the magic of those arcade games. This one came closer than a lot of those other attempts. Now, that movie's not that bad, Napper. That movie's fine. It's not great, but it's fine. I've never seen it. Is it Patrick Stewart in it? Yeah, he's somebody. You're right. Uh, it's it's <laughs> fine. It's fine. Screaming Madden says a surprisingly fun yet simpler version of the backyard baseball games on GBA. Though I also remember scoring over 30 points on average, and that is backyard baseball. Play with the pros as kids. We never got into backyard baseball. That was never nah. with us. Not really. Never, nope. Never tried that one. Um. Okay, this one, here's one I heard about. This is interesting. Yeah, Inufe says Onimusha Tactics. Never played it. Uh, yeah, man. That's that's funny, because like, people are like, every series would be good as a tactics game. This is like almost like one of those joke ones you would see. But like, no, they made it, and uh, mm-hmm. yeah, maybe it's good. Right? Yeah. Big Tony, the Final Fantasy guy, says, my dogs. This is one of my favorite beat-em-ups on the GBA, Dragon Ball Advanced Adventure. I have heard good things about it. Uh <laughs> I didn't play this. I played the um, Zelda likes that were based on Dragon Ball Z, Legacy of Goku or whatever on Game Boy Advance. Mm-hmm. And I, I those, those, were, yeah. those were fun. I liked those games quite a bit, actually. Dr. Ryan, uh, misunderstanding the prompts, is the best game on the system bar none. Final Fantasy Tactics Advance. Well, so, Not a hidden gem. I when I brought this up to my Twitch chat today, it's also one of the first ones that came up. Actually, maybe by Dr. Ryan. <laughs> that I think about it. <laughs> but I mean, I, I, and the, I think it's underappreciated, sure. Although, oddly enough, like two of my friends, uh, Jeff Krebb and Jay Ochoa, like, both really like it. Like, they're in the minority. Oh, it's a that great game. Maybe like some more than uh, the original. I would... I would love to play it. And this is one like most games. Square Enix isn't going to let on NSO because they're just going to remake it or remaster it. They're right. not going to touch this game for like a long, long time. Just put it on NSO. Come on. <laughs> All right. Ed says the Scooby Doo movie game. Pretty cool. They put Mike in it, too. There's a character named Dead Mike here who kind of looks like me with an eye patch and a do rag. And in this, he <laughs> says, with this cold, I can't tell my head from my feet. Maybe when I feel better, I can help you out. So that's Dead Mike. There's also a lot of isometric games on the Game Boy Advance for some mm-hmm. reason. I right. don't know why. Isaac Clark says the Game Boy Micro itself, so fresh and so clean. I have one. I don't have a charger for it, but I have one. I don't think I ever had a Game Boy Micro. Didn't really. Yeah, it was the I had the limited edition Famicom model. That was at the time when, like, everything had to be smaller. Like, Zoolander had yes. the really tiny phone. Yeah, you're right. That was, like, Before things started trend. getting big again. Yeah, yeah. But, yeah, it was it was a neat little system. I played a lot of uh, Final Fantasy IV Advanced on that. Just oh. squinting, trying to read everything. <laughs> Adam GC says, What made the Game Boy Advance special was seeing what developers could come up with when then with when tasked with making shrunken versions of AAA experiences, in this case, Mary Kate and Ashley's Sweet Sixteen license to drive. What is that? Do you think it's still a party game? What awful artwork! I mean, oh, it's incredible. Like not limited by the technology. It's just a bad drawing of Mary Kate and Ashley. Just incredible. I need to check out. Maybe I should just have find some way to make Dan play this blindly. If only there was a way. Right? <laughs> if only there was a way. <laughs> <clears throat> Hamondo or ha- sorry, Hammond of Texas. Hamondo. Hamondo. Hey. <laughs> I didn't see the F, but it just came. Out. Hamondo. Uh, Medal of Honor, Honor Infiltrator, a really cool top-down shooter akin to Jackal for the NES. And if you had a Game Boy Advance Game Link Cable TM, you could two-player co-op. If you played the GameCube version, Medal of Honor Rising Sun, and had a Game Boy GameCube adapter cable TM. You could turn your GBA into a map of the current level. Well, that That's sounds, fun. That sounds sick as hell, actually. I'm like immediately intrigued. Uh, yeah. It's funny because at the time, like, we, it, I feel like we all got over Medal of Honor really fast. And now, like, I kind of miss that sort of like sincere World War II yeah, shooter. An you know? earnest, yeah, an earnest World War II shooter. There is a nostalgia for that now. Yeah, yeah. At the time, it was all uh, really overdone. JD Camp says Tomato Adventure is Japanese only, but there's a good English ROM translation. It's Alpha Dream, the Mario and Luigi developers. Yeah, so this one I hear a lot, especially in terms of games we didn't get. 
Uh, I bet Jeff would love this. If I was going to play like a, an English ROM translation of a GBA game, this would be pretty high on the list, if not number one. Mm-hmm. T Money OG shows Godzilla domination because there's an exclamation point. Yeah, this looks very similar to the Destroy All Monsters melee box art, so I wonder if it's similar. Mm -hmm. Uh, We're we're in a bit of like it's weird that Godzilla is making such a pronounced like fist and punch. Yeah, he's like really he's got like a left hook. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. I I don't know if that's how Godzilla would attack a person. Uh, (laughs) Right. Yeah, I'm I'm definitely in a Godzilla mood these days, so maybe I might have to check. Yeah, it sucks because they're they're doing Godzilla minus one minus color like this week for one week only. And I just don't have a good night that I could go see it. Yeah, yeah, same. Oh, here we go. Alas. Daniel says. We've been talking about uh, Pokemon ripoffs lately, so here we go. (laughs) An elite few know Metabots, subtitle Meta B, an RPG adventure. So this is supposed to be one of the better Pokemon, uh, I don't want to say ripoffs, but, you know, similars, <laughs> right? So, uh, yes. interesting. It'd be, it'd be fun to see how that holds up. Looks like it's a watch, like a uh, yokai watch, even. It does kind of have that. a watch, huh? All right. Input name here submits Tactics Ogre, the Knight of Lotus for the Game Boy Advance. This looks pretty neat. I've, I've never played a Tactics Ogre. Yeah, um, so uh, the uh, Let Us Clink Together, whatever, is the one that usually gets most of the shout outs. I'm not uh, I, I can't imagine this one is too far behind it. It looks mm-hmm. pretty much like what you want from one of these. So, yeah, looks nice. Yeah, here we go. All right. Here's not what I was thinking. Vision, about. Yeah. Vision 49 says this is like the third time I've shoehorned this game to a topic. But the Revenge of the Shift GBA port is competent, compact, side scrolling beat up. The only reason I didn't consider this is because I more associate this with the DS version, which was a little better. It's pretty much but the same it's game. It's a great game. Except it also had like a dog fighting 3D mode, which was pretty fun. But well, yeah. it was actually cool how it mapped the force abilities to the touch screen. Yeah. So you could just like hit a button for them. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Great, great beat em up though. Either systems. So you should check this out. It was fun. Oh, here we go. <clears throat> all right. Joyzy says, I doubt these games hold up, but playing through all of DBZ's action games with RPG elements was awesome at the time. This is the two pack. Of Dragon Ball Z, The Legacy of Goku 1 and 2. Yeah, I had to buy these separately back in the day. I, I bet they're still pretty fun. I like them a oh, lot. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, oh. Seraphis Kane says, The GBA Fire Pro games are great, and for a while they were the only Fire Pro games released in English. That's interesting. Yeah, that, that'd be fun. Mm-hmm. I've never gotten too into Fire Pro Wrestling. I always like dabble here and there. They're kind of complex games. And they, it seems like you need to really devote some time to really figure them out. I have just haven't done that. But uh, yeah. I bet if I had one of these, I would have really gotten into it. Mm-hmm. Gerber says the 400 pound gorilla accountant trope was overplayed even then. But Wade Hickson's counterpunch remains awesome. Never played. Is this that game that kind of looked like uh, punch out? Yeah, I think this is like, yeah, I think this is a punch out like, which is neat. OK, cool. Weed hater says arguably the best sports game on the GBA. It's a shame they never made any sequels. Baseball advance. Like so you know sim- what you're kidding. Yeah, I like the simplicity of it. I respect it. Yeah. One of my favorite Pokemon spinoffs from Bench JC. Hopefully the series comes back. Pokemon Mystery Dungeon, specifically Blue Rescue Team. I, I won't say anything about this clearly Nintendo DS box art you used. I never played the Mystery Dungeon games too much. Uh, uh, I don't know why, because honestly, that actually sounds like a pretty intriguing way to do Pokemon. Is to do the sort of roguelike dungeon crawler thing mm-hmm. with it. I'd enjoy that. Uh, Turbo Sean says, okay, since Bench dropped this one, hey, at least we get to do the visual gag with the box arts. He did Pokemon Mystery Dungeon Red Rescue Team. There you go. So it looks like this one has a Charmander. And the other, I mean, I do like that. Suppose this one seems to actually have more fire Pokemon. The other one has more blue slash water type Pokemon. So, yeah, man, yeah, you're right. You, with the theme. You, you guys see what the gag is, right? With the box arts. One's red, one's blue. <laughs> the, on the DS one, the top one, they're looking down into a hole. On the bottom one, the uh, Game Boy Advance one, they're looking up. Oh, <laughs> oh, uh, it uh, matches uh, how you put them into a DS. DS goes in the top slot, Game Boy Advance bomb slot. It's cute. Interesting. Uh, the, the hole is kind of obscured by the So what Pokemon you're saying logo. is that Bench really... JC lied and gave me a DS game. There's not even a G- Game Boy Advance version of Blue Rescue Team. Oh, yeah. Correct. Where's the band button? Okay. <laughs> yeah, get, get him out of here. Get him out of here. Uh, Turbo Sean, who who I don't know what he sounds like, you know, audibly, uh, but he says, anyway, actual answer. And he also says Pokemon Pinball, Ruby, and Sapphire. 
And then uh, finally, some guy named Grub, who just now submitted because he's late to everything, uh, Suntman for the GBA. I do want to play that version sometime. That'd be fun. Oh, we got one more here from Christian. And it is Shrek 2. Yeah. Not the movie, the game. Just the game. Uh, the game, yeah. Is that a side score or is that another weird isometric game? I don't know. I thought it was the movie, but I thought that. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's fair, too. All right, everybody. Thank you so much. AJ, why don't we take one more break? We'll read the rest of the Super Chats. We'll talk about what we've been playing. Oh, there it is. <laughs> Thank you, Christian. And then we'll, uh, yes, we'll get it. out of here. All right. We'll be right, right back. Thank you. Thank you to all the ogres out there keeping the, the <laughs> podcast alive. Hey, I'm glad to see we got a handful of Liverpool supporters in the chat. That was exciting. Oh, Liverpool. Let's go. Yeah. You have, you, you have new... You coach something like that? I don't know. Well, I don't Jürgen, know Jürgen Klopp them. announced that this is his final season. He will be done after this, which is very, very sad because right. I like him a lot. Yeah. I'm going to go to the restroom real quick before we get. Go ahead, you go, Pete. We're going to talk about we're going to talk about actual we football. Get, um, oh, they just talk about Let's football. Go. On this show. Aim, for the, aim for the stars, brother. Get Pip. Yeah, yeah. No, I mean that'd be cool, but no. I, I, like I said, I like Zabby. We'll see if that happens. There's there's Ooh, some, there's good Zabby, options out I love there. Zabby. Um, which, which will work. Uh, my concern too is. If we lose Jurgen, I'm really worried we we lose Mo Salah and we use lose uh, Allison Becker, but we'll see, uh, we'll see. But hey, right now we're we're five points clear in the Premier League. We're in the FA Cup final on the 28th. Uh, we oh. have a, a, a I think the last I heard is a 40 to one odds of a quad sweep. So uh, just hang in it there, happen. see what happens. It can happen. Never, never lose faith. It can happen, and you know that's yeah. like it's it's weird for me. So I, I've only just gotten into to soccer slash football in the last couple of years, and and I'm still like the concept that there being multiple things you could win in a season, like to me, like like in my head, I'm like, well, the only one that matters is the Premier League, but like clearly that's not true. So it's like I guess you get excited about any of them, right? Yeah, yeah, that's no, that's get, fun. You, you, yeah, you get like. I I don't know why you only compete for one thing and like um, on no, well I mean like it. it's just the Super Bowl you can't like win on there's no other stuff going on well but you know like like you you go like into some of these like European cups you have other countries you're playing it's not <laughs> it's not like it's That's not like the Browns mean, are gonna go play like a team from Canada we don't even play the mean. same version of football oh uh, oh right yeah, so it's all like I mean, that would be cool that yeah. would be very cool it, also it though cool, like yeah. but they feel like they do like. International too, they play against like Japanese teams. They have like like um, there, there's there's a tournament, but again, it's not like the Cleveland Guardians are playing a team from Puerto Rico. It's just like we make an American team using some guys from American teams, and and they go into a separate tournament. All right, I'm back. Oh, that's right. The, the NBA does have that in season tournament. I forgot about that. I'm not a big NBA guy, but uh, oh yeah, don't they go to play in in, in China and that kind of stuff? I don't even know how it works. I just know I just know it's a thing. Okay. <laughs> don't don't guys, Jeremy the dog's been gone a long time. Don't worry about Jeremy. Oh god. Uh he's in a better place. Uh all right. Ready <laughs> to get in here and finish this? Oh yeah. Let's, I let's am do ready. It. All right, we're back. Hey Jim, I'm pretty close to beating Golden Sun, actually. Oh, that's exciting. Yeah, yeah. I uh how are you finding it? Because I know I know you, you were kinda like gameplay good, story not so much. Yeah, like I think the gameplay's fantastic. Uh battle system is a ton of fun. There's a surprising amount of depth to it. It is not just one of those mash the attack button games, even on normal fights. The dungeon puzzles are really neat. I like all these kind of um psi abilities you have or whatever to solve puzzles, ton of fun. Uh the dialogue is excruciating. <laughs> now there's like there's a ton of it. Um, it's not well written. It's incredibly like repetitive. Like characters will talk about one thing, like uh, we need to go outside, and I swear it will take them twenty dialogue boxes just to get over that one idea. To convey that idea, and then the game does that thing. Where it does. It has this thing where it's like like um like emotion bubbles will come out of characters' heads, and they do it a lot. So it's like a dialogue box. It's like hmm, we need to go outside, and then it's like frowny face. Go outside. Confused face. Yes, I think that's why we got to go outside. Another confused face. So you're saying we should go outside like that. And then it'll be like, what do you think, silent protagonist Isaac? And you could say yes or no. And then it doesn't matter. <laughs> it's like a million of that. <laughs> it's just like, oh, my God. You know, 
Like, like a lot how of these... often, how often does the dialogue box just say dot dot dot? I don't know. There's a few of that, I think. I think <laughs> so. You know, again, there's not a ton of story in the game, so it's mostly fine. Like, the you know, it is mostly you get to go to dungeons and you get to fight people, but that kind of stuff, it, like, it, whenever it's happening, it is driving me a little bit crazy. It does uh, kill the pace a bit, but overall, I'm really enjoying it. I don't know if I'm going to immediately jump into the next one, even though. It basically, like, I thought this was the case, but I'm even already, I'm like, okay, so yeah, Golden Sun and Golden Sun and the Lost Age are pretty much one game in a, in a lot of ways. It's like playing they are, Trails um, in the Sky. Weren't they originally being made for, like, the uh, the 64, and then they kind of no devolved it to GBA and Is split it, it in two? I think, I think that's how it I goes. I mean, that's why I won Mother 3. Mother 3 was on 64, and then that. Right, I, th- I, think, I think it was a similar thing with the, uh, the Golden Sun games. Yeah. So, um, but you know, I'm enjoying it. I, I might also have to take a break because I got some Persona Three to play, and um, mm-hmm. hoping that works well in my Roger or the Steam Deck, so I can be playing that portable. Because uh, uh, I like playing Persona against portable. Oh, Jeff says he mostly plays Golden Sun while driving. Well, you got to pay extra oh, that's, attention. That's, that's good. I, I was yeah. right. I'm writing an angry thread. You know, he's built differently. Yeah. Everybody, it's okay. Yeah. Don't get mad. <laughs> it's okay. Edge, are you playing any Nintendo games right now? Yeah. So, um, I. Uh, Related to Nintendo, so the 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 Final Fantasy uh, Pixel remasters on PC finally are patched to the Switch versions, like all the features and everything. Finally, it took forever, um, but yeah, you, you finally it did. Can get the you can finally just push a menu button to get a classic looking font in the Switch versions yes. of those games. Thank yeah. God, um, because you, you could mod it on PC, but like on Steam Deck, it's a pain in the ass. And uh, there's just something I like better about having a native option than modding, but uh. Right. It's interesting. So I, I went, I booted up Final Fantasy One today, and I actually had played a pretty good chunk of the NES version of Final Fantasy One, along with the "You Can Beat Games" video for it. Yeah. Uh, during a rainy day, and just played for like four hours. So it was kind of so fresh in my head, so I could kind of compare them. And uh, boy, these, these remain really solid remasters. Just the music alone is is so oh, yeah, so good. That's why like the the few sticking points were annoying because a lot of it is really well done. Especially yeah, it was like they were so close. Yeah, that rearranged music is fantastic. Mm-hmm. It, kind of especially in the NES games in a lot of ways. Actually, like you know, right. sixty points are good, but those NES soundtracks sound fantastic. If you get to like the final dungeon in Final Fantasy II, the Pandemonium song. Oh man, that hits. That hits like crazy <laughs> for me. I, mean, I like so I'm, I'm I the, the the new feature as it were is the ability to increase your gill and XP multiplier, and uh, what I was doing with that I don't turn it on when I'm in a dungeon or if I'm traveling, but if it's if it's just like okay I need to grind to level five to be able to beat this dungeon is you know it's not like there's some challenge me just spending a half hour auto battling a bunch of mobs so yeah I'm gonna turn it on for that so I could speed up my grinding and then go play the dungeons at normal clip and and, and do that and I, know I guess I turned cheater. off achievements when I did that Jeez. yeah that's right I'm embarrassed that's right. now how, how dare I how yeah, dare I I agree I, I made I made a uh a fighter a red mage a white mage and a black mage for my party I actually uh didn't use a white mage when I played it last time like I found one guy's like yeah you don't really need one red mage isn't yeah did you just go red mage yeah, yeah it's a little tricky but just having so much more damage in- Output it was kind of worth it. I think I did. Have what a was black your mage. Uh, what your fourth? Was it a uh, a monk? I think I think monk. Yeah, I think monks are very good. I think I was. A, I think I was actually red mage, monk, fighter, black mage was my group when I did it. I believe. Okay. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I think that's right. Nice. I mean, that's what that's a lot of the fun of Final Fantasy One is all these different combinations. You can do like the four white mage challenge run if you really want to, which mm-hmm. maybe mm-hmm. someday. The, the challenge run I really want to do <laughs> is um the 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 five job or the job fiesta run with Final Fantasy V. Um just cuz that was the final speed run again. Uh games mm-hmm. on quick. It wasn't the five the job fiesta where you had to sort of like you kind of randomize what jobs you get and you have to stick with it. But I love Final Fantasy V. I'm just watching it get run. I'm like, "Oof." And next time they run that game at GDQ, they're, they'll be able to turn on the uh, classic fun, I think. <laughs> so that'd be hey, cool. thank God. How about that? Yeah, fantastic. Um, I also, very randomly, I was just like, I want to play a Pokemon game, but I don't like the new one as much. And I never did play Black, like, I never beat uh, Black and White back oh, in the day. It was, the first, it was the first one I didn't beat. So I got that loaded up on my Steam Deck, and... Um, you know how like you know, like we're we're in that part of the cycle where this fall we should be getting a remake game. If yeah. they did this as an HD two D thing, it would look. I mean, it's, it almost is that. 
it yeah. looks great on the on, like uh, emulated and upresed and and yeah. all that. And uh, just just wait until yeah, you, that's good. Just wait until you get something that looks like the Diamond Pearl remakes instead. <laughs> yeah, uh, I know. God, uh, which uh, which star no. did you get? Uh the fire one. Is that I print pop sayer, and I love print pop. Is the fire one the monkey in this one? Jim Charles. No, it's a. Uh, uh, what's, what's, Sean, yeah, thank you. Oh, I was, I, I, I was, I was like I something Sean big, and out. I couldn't get it out. Yeah, that's why he's here to answer my Pokemon questions. Yes, yeah, so I, I went with Tepig. Uh, but yeah, it's uh, it's really really good. It turns out I like that game. Yeah, and uh, it's cool. Uh, have you played any 3DS games on on the Steam Deck or anything mm-hmm. like that? Mm-hmm. There's Not a few all. different ways of displaying it. It's neat. Like I can just have the bottom screen be like a little postage stamp size thing in the corner, and you can still touch it. Like, so I can just reach over my thumb and, like, hit the touchscreen for, like, the attacks and stuff. And uh, that works really well. There you go, then. They could do that on the Switch, in theory, you know? They could do that. Just right. saying. Just I saying. Mean, <laughs> yeah. Well, some, some of those are like, you should put this DS game on a Switch. And people get, like, freaked out. And really like, weird about it, yeah. yeah. They've done, like, other people, like, the po- the Mega Man XY games are on there already. Like, they're, mm-hmm. they're yeah, always They figured it, it out. It can happen. They have done it. Yes, um, it's, it's, it's fine. What are we saying? Uh, have you played anything else? No, that's it with the with Nintendo stuff. Really, a lot of it's been Tekken, and uh, I, I'm playing a lot of these Mickey Mouse games, these Illusion games, which are mm-hmm. Sega games. Actually, I'm playing, I'm playing that Prince of Persia. That, that game is so good. That game's real, real good. I it's love real, Prince real of Persia. Good. I like. I almost want to go back, but there's, there's too many other things to play. But yeah, there's too many other things to play. I but have this month, boy, if you would have told me a year ago they're gonna make a. Uh, a Metroidvania Prince of Persia. Be like, okay, I, I could see how that works. And then they'd say, yeah, it'd be about as good as Ori. You'd be like, oh, okay. <laughs> Tell it's, me more it about so this fantastic. mystery game. I was watching mm. a, I was watching a video of somebody uh, just like doing one of those like challenge rooms with the spikes coming in and out of the walls, just like doing the whole thing mm-hmm. there. I was like, God, it looks so much fun. I just love watching people do the the yeah. platforming game is just fun to look at. Yeah, I, we- I like how the 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 puzzles are platforming puzzles, yes. and that's how you solve them by platforming. And it's it's just so well done. It's good stuff. Uh, mm-hmm. Do you want to read the rest of these super chats? Yeah, we got a few more. This is this is final call, everybody. Last call for last call super for chat call. super. Ch- yeah, I was gonna say. Super Michael, chat bring my too. face back. How dare you? I'm sorry. I was op- I was opening up the music thing. Just <laughs> getting ready for that. <laughs> <laughs> all right uh jackson tinch with his fifth super chat says hi boyos welcome back edge guy thank you flew home today from walt disney world and i'm fully in my post-trip depression era how do i remedy this thanks and happy tuesday well i have some solutions for you first of all you can go listen to 90s disney yeah, right. always selling you know, re- 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 relive <laughs> abc man I'll always be clothing i mean closing Shoot. Hey, uh, <laughs> there you go um, but yeah, no, the, it, it, it's, it's real. It's a real thing. It's hard to beat. You know, look at your photos. Start planning the next trip. Just start there planning the next trip. Think about what hotel you want to go to next time. Yeah. Go yeah, on a Disney exactly. cruise right now. It'll be different. <laughs> right now. Get on the boat now. <clears throat> oh, Shigeru Miyamoto. He must have recovered his account. Oh, nice. Um, oh, no, that was Jimbo Ryan who lost his account. Excuse me. I, mi- I mixed up my executives. <laughs> Uh, he says, why does Mario have to fight with Donkey Kong? Why can't they kiss? I hope to explore this in Mario Movie 2, and hope they let me voice DK and kiss Chris. Oh, man, is, man no no love for uh, Seth Rogen there, then. Just gonna kick him yeah, out. Yeah, he's out. All he's right, out. Then. I guess he's not, he's not cool like cool Chris is. Okay. No. no. Fair enough, Shiggy. Oh, I like, who would you rather kiss, Chris Pratt or Seth Rogen? He's just gonna taste like weed. Yeah, that's gross. You're right. What is Chris mm-hmm. Pratt gonna taste like? Church water. Uh, like, yeah, or, or buffalo wings or something. I don't know. <laughs> uh, Dean Bowling says, shout out Youngstown, cradle of college football coaching, specifically my boy Mark Stoops. Sorry for the sports super chat. No, the sports super chat is welcome. All right. Hey, you, if it's a super chat, which means a money chat, basically, you can say, yeah, you can say whatever, whatever you, want. you want. Thank you. But it's a chance for me to talk about my c- close personal friend, Jim Tressel. Oh, Jackson Until he retired. Jackson is just talking about going to D23 in August. When are we going to go do a D23? What the heck? Ah, uh, someday. The kids you guys and your kids. Older. You guys and your I kids. I know. I can't know. leave with the kid. Uh, bring them. Let's bring them. It'll be great. That's just yeah. three people you have to fly and board and feed <laughs> while you're down there. Yeah. Buy tickets for it. Yeah, easy. El Grug well, says, go. Japanese- <laughs> screw you. I'll go. <laughs> yeah, you have fun, jerk. El Grug says the Japanese only custom robo and F Zero GBA games are pretty fun. That F Zero game is mostly in English for some reason. Uh, I never yeah. played them. Have you? Uh, no. So we got two. We got so there's three uh, F Zero GBA games. We got the first one, which was the launch game. Then the 
first one based off the anime, and then there's a second one based off the anime that's only in Japan, mm-hmm. and I haven't played that. Uh, I didn't know there was a custom robo game for GB. I'm not a giant yeah, custom no, robo person. I gotta dig that a little bit more. Yeah. Lurkin with my gherkin. Says the first Final Fantasy I played was 13 on the 360. It remains my favorite to this day. Do you guys have any games where your entry into the series remains your favorite, even though your brother tells you it sucks ass? <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty funny. Hmm. Um, I'm sure there's something. Yeah, it, it's hard. It, it, like, like I, I mean, Curse of Monkey Island is my favorite Monkey Island. That's a I'm good sure, one, like, actually. Th- like the true fans would probably say two. Yeah, I think that's right. I think Curse of Monkey Island is still my favorite one. Even though I think, yeah, a lot of people would say two. And I get it. I absolutely get it. But, mm-hmm. yeah, Curse mm-hmm. is kind of the first one there. The problem is I'm old, and I was around when most franchises <laughs> started. <laughs> we were there when the Earth was young. <laughs> right, exactly. So, like, I I played a lot of these things when yeah, that first one came Very few franchises out. we came into late. Right, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, that's a little I'm, bit. I'm really trying to think if there's anything else. I mean, in Dragon Quest, I did. Pl- 11 was the first one I beat, and I am pretty sure that's the best one. But. It seems like the Dragon Quest fans just agree on that one. So yeah. that might just be the right opinion there. And then even like Final Fantasy, my first one was six. I mean, that's up there, but it's not my favorite. The first one I um, beat was 12 and it's up there. But yeah, not my favorite. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah, I think I think Curse of Monkey Island. That, that, that's that a feels like a good answer. Yeah. yeah. Go with that. And that is it for the Super Chats. That is it for the Super Chats. Thank you so much, everybody. Really appreciate it. All right. Well, that was a lot of fun. AG, thank you. So much for joining me today. Covering for Jeff. I'm going to start playing this outro. You won't hear it, but when you oh, hear you my do. voice panicking, you know, so, AJ, anything you want to plug, though? <laughs> oh, no! <laughs> yeah. You might have heard of this podcast called yeah. 90s Disney. I do with that guy and our brother Chris. Oh, now you're our, uh, our, our, our new episode comes out in two days, and it's a gaming episode. So we're, Mike is uh, researching uh, uh, Castle, Castle of, Illusion. of Illusion. Yes. I, I just uh, Starring I beat, Mickey Mouse. I beat the uh, Genesis version on my stream today played a bit of the Master System slash Game Gear version and its sequel. Gotta look into nice. that, uh, the remake that came out on Steam and that DS game that actually ruled that I love. Uh, Power. Yeah. Illusion. There's a whole Illusion sub-series that maybe someday will come back. We can only hope. Be nice. Well, we had Illusion Island that was close-ish. Illusion, yeah, Illusion Island has some allusions to Illusion. Oh! Illusion Illusions. Very nice. Yeah. Yeah, they love that. Mike, where are people going to find you? you where, are you, where, where? You know where. Bye. Oh, no. Stop. Goodbye. Goodbye. Tell me when the song is over. So I stopped the recording. Okay. I thought that'd be a fast. I thought that'd be a slower fade. Let's bring it back. Let's try that again. <laughs> yeah. Come on. What is this, Jeff? There we go. That's better. Do I have to show my dick and asshole? I'm such a stupid asshole. I didn't know slavery was illegal.